Okay, so as some of you may know, if you're paying attention on Instagram and everything, I'm on a trip right now, and this trip is basically three and a half weeks. Right now, I'm in the state of California. We drove all the way from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to outside of San Francisco, and right now we're in um, Folsom, California. Um, And of course, for a three and a half week uh, trip, I can't just have one knife because I'm an insane person like many of you. And I like to change out knives a lot and everything. So I brought an assortment of knives and a little setup here that I have. Um, And I wanted to do a video on this. And I actually wanted to do a live video, but it's almost 930 here, which means it's 1230 in the morning uh, Eastern time a little late for a live video um but this is my little setup here i got this little container that i think i got at a family dollar or something actually in virginia and over here i've got my knife care stuff i got my work sharp uh, pocket sharpener i got some mineral oil and a little like cloth and i think there's an eraser here to clean off the ceramic rod as well because if you don't know uh, pencil erasers work really well for cleaning off Uh, ceramic sharpening rods Um, and this is the assortment of knives I brought um, just like this all piled together and everything because I'm not that concerned about them getting scratched up because I just throw them in my pocket with pocket change keys all that stuff anyway so they get scratched up anyway Um, but I'm gonna move this over to the side and just start kind of pulling knives out one by one Um, okay starting off with one of my favorite knives I own probably Not my favorite. My favorite is in there, and I think a lot of you already know what my favorite one is. Um, But this is the uh, TC Barlow in the glitter gold acrylic, uh, which I really like. Some people don't like the glitter gold. I really do like it. I think it's funny. Not funny, but um, it's a bit of a interesting thing to have something like pretty like this on a tool, like a Barlow pocket knife which is more of like a hard use uh, knife. I think it's neat. I do like the glare gold. I think it looks good. Uh, it looks really cool in pictures and everything. Um, and I've carried this knife quite a bit. Uh, this will have been in my most carried video and all that. Uh, but you can see the patina on the blade there. The bolster here is, you can tell that I do in fact carry this knife pretty frequently. Uh, but I wanted to bring that on the trip. So that is in the, Trip container. I'm just gonna move these off to the side, I think. Um, starting off next, the knife that I carried today, sure. Uh, this Baron Son Stockman in this green stag bone. I got two of the Barlows in this handle material, and they were both awful, and I was super upset because I love the green. Uh, but this Stockman is pretty well done, and I actually have a Trapper that's in the same handle material that's also pretty well done. Um, but these are carbon steel blades. Um, typically that's all I buy from Baron Son is their carbon steel knives. Um, I know, I think I discussed this a little bit on Instagram today. I didn't used to like the Stockman, but there's actually two Stockmans in this, uh, container for the trip. So apparently Stockmans have grown on me quite a bit. Um, but I actually really like this knife. It's pretty well put together. The action on all the blades is pretty good. Um, when the sheep's foot open is open, the back spring does sit proud a little bit. Not a super big deal. I think this was like a $50 knife, um, and it's pretty well put together for that. I love the green. This side looks a little bit like um, cafeteria, school cafeteria green beans, um, which is kind of funny. But yeah, so the Baron Sun uh, Stockman in this green um, bone stag, I think they call it. It was a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive last year, although I still think they have some of these. Not sure, though. I know they still have some of the Barlows, I think, but I have not had a good experience with them. Um, Next knife. Knife I don't really carry that much. This was my first Great Eastern Cutlery Knife. I carried it a couple days before the trip, and that made me decide that I wanted to bring it on the trip. This is the Great Eastern Cutlery 21 Bull Buster. This is part of the Farm and Field line, which is more of a basic, hard-use uh, farm pocket knife, pretty much. So, you know, this is OD uh, Linen Micarta, I think it is. 
OD linen micarta, I think. Um, but yeah, this is my first Great Eastern Cutlery knife. This is what started my obsession with Great Eastern Cutlery. And the reason why I started with the 21 is because I had this weird if, if, infatuation. Infatuation? Weird obsession, maybe, with the Case Sodbuster, which I loved and carried for like two or three years. My blue handled Case Sodbuster. Um, but this knife is a lot better than the Case Sodbuster, obviously. It's also a lot more expensive. Um, but yeah, the 21 Bullbuster came with me on the trip. Mainly because I carried it for a couple of days before the trip, and that made me decide that I wanted it on the trip. I haven't carried it on the trip yet, though, because, yeah. Uh, next, just the one that I grabbed, uh, Arthur Wright & Sons. This is the large lamb foot knife with rosewood handles. I haven't really carried this knife a whole lot. I've carried it a bit. Uh, carbon steel blade. It's got that lamb's foot blade shape, which is... A very uh, English thing, like the blade actually tapers down as it goes out, and it's like a um, tapered sheep's foot type thing. Uh, interesting blade shape, pretty useful for a lot of like you know utility tasks, opening boxes, cutting um, things off of things. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty cool knife. I like this one a lot. I like this better than the small lamb foot that I had. Um, pretty well put together knife. The action on it is um, pretty hard to pull open. Um, but yeah, hard to use knife. Uh, pretty well made for what it is. I think this costs like $40. So really happy with it for $40, obviously. Um, but yeah, just a, you know, English made lamb foot uh, Arthur Wright and Son knife. Uh, they're part of the trip here with me. Case medium toothpick. I got this a little while ago. I don't think the video on it's come out yet, but um, I do have one of these, and this one's actually excellent. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about this too much because there's a video coming out on this. But something that I did notice and didn't mention in the video, it seems like Case isn't stamping the tank stamps anymore. It's like a laser etch. Let me show you what I mean here, quick, because I got a Case peanut, which is another knife that I brought. Um, so on the older case knives, it used to be stamped into the tang, hence tang stamp. But on these, it's just kind of laser etched on, it seems. So I don't really like that. But if case can get their quality control under control, and I'm trading quality control for an etched uh, blade stamp, I'll take that. Uh, but this knife is excellent, this medium toothpick in this uh, pocket-worn gray here. like this knife a lot, so I wanted to bring it on the trip. Uh, there's a video coming on that sometime in the future. I don't think it's come out yet. I have it filmed. I schedule videos um, to come out sometimes months ahead of time, so I'm not sure exactly when it's coming out. Uh, since I have it out, Case Peanut, I believe the video on this is live, uh, in this Caribbean saw cut bone. It looks great. It's very pretty. Um, just a small little knife to carry while I was in the city limits of San Francisco, really. Um, I wanted to have a knife that if I pulled it out in the city, nobody would be frightened. And this little case peanut does that job really well because it is both tiny and very cute. Um, but yeah, and I did actually use it. I use it to open a bag of Gira, Girardelli, Girardelli. I think they're founded. I think they're based in San Francisco. Um, let me see if I can just pull this over here quick. This. I used it to open up a bag of that chocolate uh, because we stopped there. Um, but yeah, cute little knife. Uh, good for city, you know, because it's unassuming and cute and small and everything. Um, let's see here. Urban Jack. Why not? It's a knife that I was actually kind of excited for, but I haven't really carried it. Since I got it, I did carry it a couple days ago for the first time, I think. Uh, this is a 15 pattern, which I am quite fond of. It's the same pattern that the TC Barlow is based on. Um, but this one is just like a boy's knife. This one has canvas OD uh, micarta, uh, spearpoint blade, just a basic spearpoint blade, which I actually prefer over the 
like swedged one. Um, and then it has a beard comb, which is kind of neat. Um, you know, and they call this the beard refuse removal tool, I think. Um, and it's got the cool shield on there that says Urban Jack. And then it's got uh, this like hipster looking guy on there that I guess is like a barber because he's got a pair of scissors there. Uh, just an interesting little knife that Great Eastern Cutlery did, uh, I think in 21. Hang stamp on the blade, I guess, probably. Yeah, 21. Uh, so neat little knife. Um, interesting. I believe the bolsters are steel and the liners are steel on this. So that'll pocket patina up real nice and everything. Um, so one of my favorite knife that I own, and that's this Winchester Black Box Moose here. That was made in, I think, 88. Yep, 1988. Uh, I love this knife. This is my favorite knife. Um, if you don't know, the Black Box series, I believe, was made from bone that was sourced from an old Utica factory. And Queen took a lot of that bone and like re dyed it, I think, and basically uh, used it for handles for knives. So these Black Box knives have an interesting history. Um, and they're all very, they all the ones that I've seen have been pretty well done. Um, I do have a sow belly that had a couple like weird things with it. That was a black box knife, but all the other ones that I've gotten have been great. And there's a reason why this is my favorite knife. It's about the size I want a pocket knife to be. Um, the pull on the main blades was ridiculous. And I did clean this one up a little bit before the trip. You can see the Winchester etch is completely gone. And that's because I've used this knife and polished it now, I think twice. Um, but this will have a patino on it and everything before long, I'm sure, because I really do love carrying this knife. It's, like I said, it's my favorite knife. In fact, right now I'm trying to work on drawing a uh, tattoo to kind of represent this knife because I think it would be kind of cool. Like I've wanted a tattoo for a while, but I haven't thought of anything to do it on. And I think it would be cool to do like a tattoo kind of of this knife since it is my favorite knife and knives are such a uh, for like a big part of my life. I think it would be kind of cool, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but this is the Winchester Black Box Moose, 1988. Um, okay. French knife. I did a French knife for French Friday because there's going to be a couple of them while I'm on my trip. So I care, I'm, care, I'm brought the um, newest French knife I have, which is this GR Violin that I got from knivesoffrance.com. If you go to knivesoffrance.com, you spend more than $50. You use coupon code BAKERYWIZARD, you can get 10% off. Um, and I use that code. So you guys can use that code um, if you spend more than $50. It's a good idea to use it. It's free for you to use. Um, but horn handles, um, cool, like spear blade pretty much. Maybe a drop point if you want to call it that. Um, but spear blade, um, the action on this one is not exactly amazing, but it does snap open pretty cool. Snaps open good. Uh, French knife, so you don't really want to let it snap closed. You kind of want to close it gently. So it doesn't wrap the blade on the back spring because most of them do that. Um, but this overall is just a really nice looking knife. I like the shape of the whole thing. I like the handle shape. I like the shape of the blade. I like the size of the blade. The blade is very thick too, so it really feels like a hardworking uh, pocket knife. Um, I haven't really carried it enough to form like an opinion of if it's like my favorite French knife or anything. I think the Alpin still probably is my favorite French knife for now. Uh, but this one is good. I do like it. And I really like knivesofbrands.com, but you guys probably already know that. And then I have this Arthur Wright Barlow here in stag handles. I had to bring one of these on this trip because I really like these Arthur Wright Barlows. I think I have three of these now. I have this one in the stag. I have the original rosewood one that I did the like wood burning pattern on and everything. And then I have one in ebony and I did buy the one rosewood one from England directly. I actually gave that one to my friend for him to have because I don't really need to have another rosewood one when I already have a rosewood one. Um, but yeah, I really like these uh, Arthur Wright Barlows. 
I may end up buying another one of these, but it'll probably be one of the ones that's a different blade shape, either the lamb foot one or the, um, I forget what they call it, but it's more like a sheep's foot. Um, just trying to think of what that blade shape is called. I don't remember. I'm tired right now. Um, Warncliffe, that's what it's called. They call it a Warncliffe. It is not a Warncliffe as far as I'm concerned, but that is what. It, but it looks more like a sheep's foot. They call it a Warncliffe. So if I'm going to get another one of these, it'll be one of those two other blade shapes that they have. Um, I wish that they had a spear blade. And they might in England, but I can't get it over here. Um, but yeah, anyway... <laughs> Uh, Arthur Wright Barlow in Stag with the regular clip blade and everything. I uh, really like this knife. really like these Arthur Wright uh, knives in general, but especially the little Barlows. Um, this is a moving one here. Uh, Big Remington Stockman. I did a video on this. I think came out last week, so this is pretty current. Um, this is a very large Stockman made by Camillus for Remington. Um Huge clip point blade here. This knife is, of course, carbon steel, if you didn't know that already. Um, saw cut green Delrin handles. Of course, it is just a regular stockman. So you got your regular, you know, sheep's foot and spay blades. And then the clip blade main blade. All the blade action. The action on all the blades is very good. Um, and this knife is about the size that I wish all stockmans were, but, you know... Sometimes a little more Stockman is good, too. I do like the Baron Sun Stockman, um, which is smaller. But really nice knife. You can still get these for around uh, $50 or so on eBay. And for that price, they're really well made and everything. Um, certainly better than most modern case knives that you're going to get. And it costs less. So that's also a, a benefit there. Um, but anyway, just a nice Stockman knife. And then lastly here, I have this. Uh, Great Eastern Cutlery Muskrat in the Coffee House acrylic here. Um, of course, Muskrat's got two of these long, slender clip blades here uh, on a single back spring. It's got the corset shield, I think is what Great Eastern Cutlery calls it. See, it kind of looks like a corset there. Um, and then nickel silver bolsters and everything. The coffee house acrylic is kind of an orangish color and it's got little like swirls of like brown through it kind of looking like coffee i suppose i really do like this acrylic i think it looks very nice um i did buy two of these one for a matching pair one for me and one for my girlfriend she accidentally put hers through the wash and it uh came out okay actually which surprised me uh, i think because she caught it immediately um but yeah, nice knife. I really like the the muskrat pattern. It's in my top five. I think it's probably four out of five or maybe five out of five. Um, but a pattern I like because it's, you know, usually a pretty slender knife. And it's nice to have two clip blades, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so these are all the knives that I brought on my trip because I can't carry one knife for three and a half weeks. That's crazy. Um, and then, I think I already talked about this, but the other things in my little uh, knife suitcase, I'll call it, is the work sharp sharpener, some mineral oil, and cloth, uh, just for basic like knife maintenance stuff. Um, but yeah, those are the knives that I brought on the trip with me. Um, I will see you guys in the next video, and I hope you have a good day.